In meta-ethics, expressivism is a theory about the meaning of moral language. According to expressivism, sentences that employ moral terms, for example, it is wrong to torture an innocent human being, are not descriptive or fact-stating. Moral terms such as wrong, good, or just do not refer to real, in the world properties. The primary function of moral sentences, according to expressivism, is not to assert any matter of fact, but rather to express an evaluative attitude toward an object of evaluation. Because the function of moral language is non-descriptive, moral sentences do not have any truth conditions. Hence, expressivists either do not allow that moral sentences have truth value, or rely on a notion of truth that does not appeal to any descriptive truth conditions being met for moral sentences. Topic. Overview Expressivism is a form of moral anti-realism or nonfactualism, the view that there are no moral facts that moral sentences describe or represent, and no moral properties or relations to which moral terms refer. Expressivists deny constructivist accounts of moral facts, e.g. Kantianism, as well as realist accounts, e.g. ethical intuitionism, because expressivism claims that the function of moral language is not descriptive, it allows the realist to avoid an error theory, the view that ordinary moral thought and discourse is committed to deep and pervasive error, and that all moral statements make false ontological claims. Topic. Distinction from descriptivist subjectivism Expressivism does not hold that the function of moral sentences as used in ordinary discourse is to describe the speaker's moral attitudes. Expressivists are united in rejecting ethical subjectivism, the descriptivist view that utterances of the type, X is good, bad, mean, I approve, disapprove of X. Subjectivism is a descriptivist theory, not an expressivist one, because it maintains that moral sentences are used to represent facts, namely, facts about the subject's psychological states. Topic. Historical development, from noncognitivism, emotivism to cognitivist expressivism Some early versions of expressivism arose during the early 20th century in association with logical positivism. These early views are typically called noncognitivist. A. J. Ayer's emotivism is a well-known example. According to emotivism, the act of uttering a moral sentence of the type, X is good, bad is closely akin to the expression of a positive or negative emotional attitude toward X, and such an utterance can be paraphrased by hurrah for X or boo, X. C. L. Stevenson also advanced an important version of emotivism. At the beginning of the middle of the 20th century, R. M. Hare was an important advocate of expressivism, noncognitivism. Hare's view is called prescriptivism because he analyzed moral sentences as universal, overriding prescriptions or imperatives. A prescriptivist might paraphrase, X is good, as, do X. More recent versions of expressivism, such as Simon Blackburn's, quasi realism, Alan Gibbard's, norm expressivism, and Mark Timmons and Terence Horgan's, cognitivist expressivism, tend to distance themselves from the, noncognitivist, label applied to Eyre, Stevenson, and Hare. What distinguishes these, new wave, Expressivists is that they resist reductive analyses of moral sentences or their corresponding psychological states, moral judgments, and they allow for moral sentences, judgments to have truth value. Horgan and Timmons label, cognitivist expressivism, in particular captures the philosophical commitment they share with Blackburn and Gibbard to regard moral judgments as cognitive psychological states, i.e., beliefs, and moral sentences as vehicles for genuine assertions or truth claims. Much of the current expressivist project is occupied with defending a theory of the truth of moral sentences that is consistent with expressivism but can resist the frege geach objection see below. Expressivists tend to rely on a minimalist or deflationary theory of truth to provide an realist account for the truth of moral sentences. <laughs> Topic. Arguments for Topic. Open question argument According to the open question argument originally articulated by intuitionist and non-naturalist G. E. Moore, for any proposed definition of a moral term, e.g., good equals the object of desire, 
A competent speaker of English who understands the meaning of the terms involved in the statement of the definition could still hold that the question, is the object of desire good? remains unanswered. The upshot of this argument is that normative or moral terms cannot be analytically reduced to natural or non-moral terms. Expressivists argue that the best explanation of this irreducibility is that moral terms are not used to describe objects, but rather to evaluate them. Many philosophers regard expressivists or noncognitivists as the real historical beneficiary of the open question argument. Some moral realists maintain that a synthetic reduction of moral terms to natural terms is possible. Other realists including Moore himself have concluded that moral terms refer to non-natural, sui generis properties or relations, but non-naturalism is vulnerable to the argument from queerness see below. Topic. Argument from moral disagreement Persons may disagree in their moral evaluations of the same object, while possessing all the same information about the natural or descriptive facts about the object of evaluation. Expressivists argue that such deep moral disagreement is evidence that moral judgment is not a species of descriptive or factual judgment. Topic. Argument from queerness Topic. Objections Topic. The fridge geech problem The fridge geech problem, named for Peter Geech, who developed it from the writings of Gottlob Frege, claims that by subscribing to expressivism one necessarily accepts that the meaning of it is wrong to tell lies is different from the meaning of the it is wrong to tell lies part of the conditional if it is wrong to tell lies, then it is wrong to get your little brother to lie. And that therefore expressivism is an inadequate explanation for moral language. Frege Geech contends that, it is wrong to get your little brother to tell lies, can be deduced from the two premises by modus ponens as follows. It is wrong to tell lies. If it is wrong to tell lies, then it is wrong to get your little brother to tell lies. Therefore, it is wrong to get your little brother to tell lies. In the second statement, the expressivist account appears to fail, in that the speaker asserting the hypothetical premise is expressing no moral position towards lying, condemnatory or otherwise. The expressivist thus cannot account for the meaning of moral language in this kind of unasserted context. This problem assumes that logic only applies to real truth values. Topic. Illocutionary act intention argument. Terence Cuneo argues against expressivism by means of the following premise. It is false that, in ordinary optimal conditions, when an agent performs the sentential act of sincerely uttering a moral sentence, that agent does not thereby intend to assert a moral proposition, but intends to express an attitude toward a non-moral state of affairs or object. Proponents of expressivism are concerned to preserve the participants in ordinary moral thought and discourse from charges of deep error. But, Cuneo argues, there is evidence that many such participants do intend to represent a factual moral reality when they make moral judgments. Hence, if the expressivists are correct and moral language is not properly used to make factual, descriptive assertions, many participants in ordinary moral discourse are frustrated in their illocutionary act intentions. On these grounds it is argued that we should give up expressivism, unless the expressivists are to give up on their claim that expressivism is not an essentially revisionist view of moral thought and discourse. References Bibliography Eyre, A. J. Language, Truth, and Logic. London, Gollinch. Blackburn, Simon 1984. Spreading the Word. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Blackburn, Simon 1993. Essays in Quasi-Realism. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Blackburn, Simon 1998. Ruling Passions. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Cuneo, Terence 2006. Saying What We Mean, pp. 35-71 in Russ Schaefer Landau, ed., Oxford Studies in Metaethics, Vol. 1. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Darwall, Stephen, Gibbard, Allen, and Railton, Peter 1997. 
Toward fan de siècle ethics, some trends, pp. 3–47 in Stephen Darwall, Alan Gibbard, and Peter Railton, Moral Discourse and Practice. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Gibbard, Alan Wise Choices, Apt Feelings. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. Horgan, Terry and Timmons, Mark 2006a. Cognitivist Expressivism, pp. 255-298 in Terry Horgan and Mark Timmons, eds. Metaethics after more. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Horgan, Terry and Timmons, Mark 2006b. Expressivism, yes. Relativism, no, pp. 73-98 in Russ Schaefer Landau, ed. Oxford Studies in Metaethics, Vol. 1. Oxford, Oxford University Press. Horgan, Terry and Timmons, Mark 2006 c. Morality Without Moral Facts, pp. 220-238 in James Dreyer, ed. Contemporary Debates in Moral Theory. Oxford, Blackwell. Joyce, Richard, Moral Anti-Realism, The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy Fall 2007 edition, Edward N. Zalta, ed. 1. Timmons, Mark 1999. Morality Without Foundations. Oxford, Oxford University Press, Van Rugen, Mark, Moral Cognitivism vs. Non-Cognitivism, The Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy Winter 2005 edition, Edward N. Zalta, ed. 2.